The Biden administration is run by a bunch of out of touch, anti-American zealots, and they seem so cold to what Americans are going through. What have I told you uh, several times? What are the three things everyone running this country has in common now? We're a broken, rotted society, and all of our cultural leaders, sadly, now this share the same three characteristics. One, no patriotism, no love of country at all. Oftentimes they hate the country, but there's no love of country. Two, no experience in the real world. These people go right from academia to the media to politics. They don't know what normal people go through. And three, an ironclad belief that they are of a higher class and should rule over you. And the problem for the Biden administration is they don't seem to be able to hide any of those three characteristics. In fact, they're always out there just, well, it's someone else's fault. If you watch the news recently, you might think the shelves in all our stores are empty across the country. That uh, parents won't be able to get presents for their children on holidays this holiday season. But here's the deal. For the vast majority of the country, that's not what's happening. Can't promise that every person will get every gift they want on time. Only Santa Claus can keep that promise. But there are items every year that sell out that are hard to find. Some of you moms and dads may remember Cabbage Patch Kids back in the 80s or Beanie Babies in the 90s or other toys that have run out at Christmas time in past years when there was no supply chain problem. I'm sorry, what? They seem, like I said, they seem so cold and out of touch. Not stepping up and saying, hey, we're on it. We're going to get this fixed. Hey, we're going to change direction. We're going to do this policy. Instead, it's a constant stream of that. I mean, do you remember the Beanie Babies? That's, I don't see what the big deal is. It just, there's no connection there. They have no idea what working people are actually going through. And inflation, uh, he just tried to spend trillions of dollars, is spending trillions of dollars. We're still printing money like no tomorrow. That causes inflation. We know that already. And Joe Biden, one thing that hits me more and more every time I hear him talk, and this is even when he doesn't screw up like there, is how tired and old he sounds. It's, I don't, I mean, you, you probably remember I, the Beanie Babies and the, he always sounds exhausted. Does that sound like a man who's with it? Does that sound like a man who's all over it? Here he is trying to sign a bill the other day. He has no idea what he's signing. Wave to Lieutenant Colonel Tanya Robinson there in uniform. how are you? Well, I tell you what, whatever she tells me you're going to do, I just say yes. We served, we served together when we were lieutenants. Oh, oh great. In case you're wondering what you just saw there, that was Joe Biden. He's on camera. He's trying to have a conversation. And the White House staff, the people really running the show, are in the back room going, turn on the music! But we can't have him talking! Turn on the music! Why is everyone so worried about Joe Biden talking? Well, there's a new book out. May have a clue into that. We have Hunter Biden talking to a therapist flat out saying, ah, he doesn't remember very much these days. We have family members saying it. So again, let me ask. I know I've asked this before. I know I've asked this before, but let me ask. Why isn't Hunter Biden stepping in? Why isn't Jill Biden stepping in? That is the family patriarch. He is routinely embarrassing himself in front of the entire world. The whole world watches when the president talks. Why aren't they stepping in and stopping this nonsense? How long would you let your father, your grandfather, embarrass himself in front of even one person? Now imagine if your father or grandfather was embarrassing him, himself in front of the entire world. You would step in and say, no, 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 that's all. My dad's retiring. We'll be in the country taking care of him. Instead, they leave this man in the most stressful job on the planet. If you know anything about the things he's going through mentally, no. They might kill him. This job could kill him. 
and I dislike Joe Biden, I don't want to see any harm come to Joe Biden. Let the man retire and go relax before the job puts him down. And look, he has a slip of the tongue occasionally, gets awfully honest sometimes with it. For many years, President and Vice President Harris has led the fight to address this tragedy of maternal, morali- mor- maternal mortality. Yes, uh, Kamala Harris actually does have a bit of an issue with maternal morality. I think you actually nailed that one the first time, Joe. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Kamala Harris has other problems. We have Simone Sanders. She was her spokesman. She's out. She just said, hey, I'm done. I quit. Now, that's the third staffer in less than two weeks who has quit on Kamala Harris. Why? Why does this keep happening? Why is everyone leaving? Kamala Harris is notoriously, notoriously terrible to work for. And it's not hard to figure out why. Kamala Harris is hard to work for because Kamala Harris is only ambition. There's nothing else in her. You've known someone like this undoubtedly in your life. You've probably, unfortunately, had to work with someone like this. You know the guy or the gal who will quite literally say or do anything in order to get ahead and achieve the next thing. And the problem is when you get someone like that, say or do anything oftentimes involves crushing the people underneath you in order order for you to look good. That's what you're seeing right now. Kamala Harris, of course she's terrible to work for. Kamala Harris doesn't doesn't have a core belief system of any kind. She's not even a liberal, really. Not a conservative, not a liberal, not a moderate. Kamala Harris is ambition. Kamala Harris will do and say anything she has to, including destroy her own staff. That's why everyone hates working for her. I did enjoy watching Peter Ducey ask Jen Psaki about it. Is the vice president not satisfied with the staffing that she has had so far, or do people just not want to work for her anymore? Well, Peter, I would say that working on a presidential campaign, I may be covering one too, I would say, to be fair, and uh, working in the first year of a White House is exciting and rewarding, but it's also grueling and exhausting. So this is not a case of bad headlines about the vice president and a decision being made to shake up the staff to fix an image issue. It's only natural after a couple of years to be ready for something new. Uh, And that's what happens in my experiences, in my experience in the past, in White Houses often. Yeah, she was just ready for something new. Look, there's a reason we hardly ever hear from Dome. Once a week, maybe you'll hear her. The White House has buried her, and the rumors are flying around Washington, D.C. They want her out. Some people want her out now. They're trying to figure out how to do it. A lot of people want her out for Joe Biden's re-election. I can't even believe I'm saying those words, but the dude said he's running again, so I guess we'll have to take him at face value. Apparently, he's running again. They need her gone. Talking about throwing her on the Supreme Court, like that would ever happen. But this is... This is going to be an interesting infight we're about to witness with the Democratic Party. And then you have Buttigieg. Remember, Buttigieg was in that Democrat primary. And then all of a sudden, just, it's a miracle. All the candidates decided to drop out at once and endorse Joe Biden. That's so odd how they did that. And then they all got positions in Joe Biden's government. There certainly was no deal struck beforehand, which would be illegal. There was no deal struck beforehand. They just, out of the goodness of their hearts, realized Joe was, Joe's the man. Now, we all know what happened. Butt gigs, this young, ambitious Democrat, wants to be president of the United States one day. He wasn't getting traction in the primary. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, someone cut him a deal. Hey, Pete, maybe we'll back you next time. Just be a good little boy now. And Pete said, yes, master, I'll do that. And look, they're already asking him about 2024, and he ain't really denying it. It, It's 2021, and the whole point of campaigns and elections is when they go well, you get to govern. And uh, we we are squarely focused on the job at hand. Uh, I'm excited to be part of a team led by the president and the vice president. And uh, I think the teamwork that got us to this point is is really just the beginning. As transportation secretary, I get to be the face of a lot of these investments that we're doing. uh, But we would not be here without the leadership of the vice president, as well as the president, of course, and so many others. Oh, yeah. They're a very close-knit group. They're very close. They get along well. They probably had Thanksgiving together. We all know the game, Pete. Well, it's 2021. Oh, please. He's eyeballing the White House every day. 
Hey, thanks so much for watching the first on YouTube. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and like and subscribe. You heard me, like it, subscribe. You'll get a lot more of it and a lot more of me.